Howdy folks and welcome back to What the Hell Even Is the Internet, where I hate on the internet while trying to make a living on the internet. And in terms of making it on the internet, everybody is looking for that one thing, chasing that one feeling, blowing up, going viral, even semi-viral, getting some of those sweet, sweet internet points. And I kinda, sorta, a little bit finally got some of that. And you know what happened? A whole hell of a lot of nothing. But it did help me realize a few things about the nature of TikTok and other platforms that I wanted to talk about. I recently uploaded this video on TikTok about my three female roommates making a dumb women are bad at driving joke. Things that I've learned as a man living with three female roommates. Candles are truly the pinnacle of comfort. Food is for function, but it doesn't mean that it can't also be tasty. Also, women can drive. They shouldn't because they're bad at it, but like legally they're allowed to. And it should go without saying that I don't actually believe that every woman is bad at driving. It's just one of those silly, goofy, women bad, haha, satirical videos. Despite what some people in the comments may have you believe. Next thing I knew, the video was at 500,000 views, and I thought, okay, surely it's going to slow down or stop now. And then boom, a couple hours later, it was at a million. Sure thing, next morning, it was at a little over two and a half mil. Now, this is nowhere near viral in today's world. A million back in the day used to be really, really, really difficult to hit. Nowadays, I think of something going viral as maybe 10 or 20 million views. In terms of TikTok, obviously YouTube is a little bit different. This video got me thousands more followers, a lot of my other videos started getting views, and it really started putting my content in front of a lot more people. But there's only one little tiny, little bitty problem. I don't really care about TikTok that much. At least I didn't. I make my primary income over on Twitch, and hopefully someday I can monetize more long-form content like here on YouTube. I use TikTok because it's just kind of a fun way to diversify the content that I do make and get some of the silly, goofy jokes out of my head. It also just helps me make a lot more content that I can upload in other areas, and I just love making content. It's something I plan on doing for a long, long time. But moving people from TikTok to Twitch or YouTube is damn near impossible. So I wondered if it was just a me problem. Somebody with a really small following, obviously percentage-wise, it's going to be really difficult to move people over. Especially for a one-hit wonder. So I took a look at somebody like Vinny Lacosto. He's one of my favorite creators on TikTok. I think he's really, really funny, and he's got a pretty sizable following. What are you doing? Why won't you let me leave? <laughs> don't, don't you want to stick around for a little longer? <laughs> Please? Get out of my way! Shut up! Just listen to me! It's not safe out there! He's here! He's got almost a million followers on TikTok, and lately he's been promoting his YouTube and his Twitch a lot more, and the numbers just don't add up the same. He's doing really well. He's got over 7,000 subscribers over on YouTube, and not quite as many on Twitch, but he's fairly new to that platform. But why is it so difficult for TikTokers to break the mold into other platforms? Well, the really obvious answer is that moving short-form content users to long-form is really, really difficult. The platform that you use the most is kind of a habit that's built, and different types of people take in different types of content. YouTube has been my primary source of entertainment for damn near a decade now. And I'm just lazy. There's other platforms that I could use, but I know that YouTube consistently houses the creators that I like the most. But TikTok is another beast entirely. In fact, it's so difficult to get off of TikTok that they promote ads that say, stop scrolling, go to bed, drink some water. They know how addicting it is and how difficult it is to get off of that platform. That quick style of content just scratches an itch in our brains where Vine used to live. From a creator's perspective, after having a video that garnered me a little bit of attention, the dopamine rush is insane. I never would have thought that some arbitrary numbers on a screen would have such a profound impact, but TikTok knows what they're doing. There's been a lot of talk in different videos on TikTok about TikTok heating, where every certain number of videos from a creator, they get a little bit of a boost in the algorithm, and it keeps them chasing that next viral video. But that dopamine rush comes with a little bit of realism. Let's say I continue and I get up to the likes of Vinny Lacosto. How difficult is it to be something other than that TikTok guy? Obviously, I'm a really small creator on TikTok. I by no means have some ego about my numbers. But how can somebody like Vinny and others break out into other platforms? Well, very recently, another TikToker by the name of Brody Wellmaker tried to promote his short film. Enjoying the single life? To love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. He wrote, produced, and directed it with a couple other TikTokers, notably Call Me Chris and Evan Williams. He was trying to break out and do something new, a creative passion project. From what I understand, he just really wants to be an actor. And if you watch it, it's actually really good. The production value is way more than I had expected, but very few people know that because very few people actually went to watch it, especially when you compare his success on TikTok. 
Part of that is because of the price tag. For a while in the beginning, it cost almost as much as going to watch a feature length film. And I don't blame him for that. I mean, he spent something around $40,000 on the production. And if moving people to a new platform is difficult, moving people from a free platform to a paid one has to be really, really hard. The audience of some of these creators are getting used to seeing them in very small doses. But there may actually be one surefire way that they could get out of that because we've seen it before with Vine. Curtis Connor, Drew Gooden, and a lot of others like them have been able to break the mold of being that Vine guy because they were able to find success moving into YouTube as commentary and reactionary creators because Vine died. May it rest in pepperoni, but if you wanted to get your Curtis Connor kick, you now had to go to YouTube. Even if it was just to find compilations of him, you were pretty quickly able to find out that he was making his own content again. Some people like Curtis Connor were smart enough to make that move before the end of Vine. As TikTokers grow and move on to bigger and better things, the one thing that might help them most is the death of TikTok. I'm not saying it's this way for every creator. There are absolute TikTok superstars that have been able to move on. People like the D'Amelios are very much in vogue. But let me know what you think. Is it possible for creators to move from platform to platform and bring an audience with them? It seems to me like short form to long form is the largest obstacle in the way of that. Let me know what you think in the comments. I don't know everything. I hardly know anything. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking, sharing, commenting, and hit that subscribe button to become instantly dummy thick. It'll happen, I promise. Speaking of internet points, we're almost at a thousand subscribers here on the channel, and that is wild because that was my goal by the end of the year. So thanks to all of you. That is all, and as always, okay, bye.